This is KGW News at Sunrise. God, have mercy on your pathetic soul. He took my mother away from me. A local woman's family not mincing words. She went missing in late January and was recently found dead in the trunk of her car. Now her fiance is in jail, charged with her death. Plus. Um, usually I do mostly meth. And this area always has been known for a, a pretty heavy drug area. So honestly, I believe they shouldn't have put a preschool right in there. Well, that's one person's take. But parents with kids at that downtown Portland preschool will tell you it's not the school's location that's the problem here. It's the heavy drug use happening every day in the city's park blocks. We're going to hear more about the issue from parents and police in just a few minutes. Plus. Are you looking for a new job? If you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, Chris McGinnis has one idea for you. How about maintaining wind turbines? Hmm. Coming, coming up this morning on Sunrise, more on the growing market for tower technicians. It oh. is a Wednesday morning here on the Sunrise Show. Uh, Chris is talking about wind, <laughs> but you have not been talking about wind. No, lately. I have not. It looks like you have to use a ladder in that job. Is that right, Chris? Uh, a harness, a rope, okay. and, a, and, a, yeah. and, a, and a trusted friend. Probably a yeah. great story. Yeah. Count me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you know, Drew mentioned uh, we made a big deal of this the last couple of days, the fact that we don't really have any wind out there, no east winds. Winds are light again this morning, mainly from the west. Uh, we have a disturbance offshore. If you look carefully, you see a little curl. That's the disturbance, and it is dropping south. It will not push inland, but it is throwing an early uh, push of moisture. So you've got fairly steady rain around Newport. Uh, over the coast range, we've got scattered showers moving up into the Portland area. We're at 44 degrees, so you'll likely run through some of that rain with your windshield wipers going this morning. It looks like most of what we're going to get starts to get out of here as early as 8, 9 o'clock this morning. And then the remainder of the day, just a few scattered showers around. Sun breaks opening up, 48 degrees at noon. We probably hit 50 again for a high. Here's Chris. Wet on the roads this morning, right? This is photojournalist Chad Dehart manning the wheel of Drive 8, about to head uh, south onto the, actually, it's about to transition on I-5 North, right over the Markham Bridge, and you can see the roads are a little damp out there. We'll hop over to the west side, Highway 26, out near Cordelius Pass Road. We're all green on the traffic map this morning, so no major issues out there. And a reminder, of course, each night this week, uh, the St. John's Bridge closes for the biennial bridge inspection that uh, reopens every morning at 5 a.m. So just be on the lookout if you're out late tonight uh, or tomorrow night. It'll be closed again, guys. All right, we'll have more from Chris and Rod coming up here in a few minutes. Right now, though, we want to get to some of our local headlines this morning. We start with this. The search for a Portland murder suspect has expanded to southwest Washington. Police say Annalisa Gold killed her husband late last month in the Lentz neighborhood of southeast Portland. At this point, they believe she may be in and around the Mount St. Helens area. Gold is reportedly driving a burnt, uh, burnt orange Toyota 4Runner with Oregon plates and white decals on the rear windows. Anyone who sees her should call 911. A man has now been charged with murdering his fiance, who had been missing in Northeast Portland for over a week. In addition to second degree murder, John French is also being charged with abuse of a corpse. Investigators believe French killed Jeannie Inyard and left her body inside her car in Skamania County. Detectives arrested him Monday night. Inyard's family members say French mistreated her throughout their two year relationship. They say they always assumed he was somehow involved in her disappearance. I also want her to be an example of domestic abuse and how hard it is to leave. And I am so angry too. I'm so angry and it's not fair. Right now, it's not clear if French will get bail. Police also made an arrest in a deadly hit and run that happened early Monday morning. They say 26 year old Skyler Lee Stiles was speeding through a work zone at 82nd and Flavelle in southeast Portland when he hit a man who was crossing the street and then took off. Lee Stiles was arrested shortly after. His charges include criminally negligent homicide. And an 18 year old is in jail after police found what they're calling a machine gun inside his home. Portland police arrested Keandre Horgan and raided his home on North Jersey Street yesterday in response to recent shootings in the neighborhood. Inside, police found a handgun with a 50 round magazine and a device that you see there on your screen called an auto sear that can turn a handgun into a fully automatic weapon. Police also found bullet holes in the walls and ceiling. 
today, the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners is set to hold meetings to discuss homelessness and drug use on the streets. The first session addressing the county's homeless services system and a new oversight plan starts at 10. The second session is at 1030, where commissioners will discuss possible questions to ask voters about reshaping Measure 110. That's the voter approved law legalizing possession of small amounts of hard drugs. People can attend both meetings in person or on Zoom. You can find more information on the county's website. This morning, we're also hearing from parents who are speaking out about the rampant public drug use in downtown Portland's South Park blocks. Right, so that is the area on Southwest Jefferson, and it's near a preschool and church. Our Devin Haskins has been looking into it this morning. Devin, how are police responding? Yeah, so for the past two weeks, officers with Portland Police and Oregon State Police have been targeting the block around Southwest Jefferson and 10th Avenue. It's been a hot spot for drug use and it's right outside that downtown preschool. Earlier this week, police handed out several citations to police uh, to people using drugs there and connected at least two people with addiction treatment services. That's a short term fix to a big problem that will move again and pop up somewhere else. The mayor's office tells KGW they're aware of the concerns outside the school and have taken several steps to address the problem. Those include removing tents and the mayor's staff walking the block during school drop off hours. At the school itself, before every recess, teachers will come out and sweep the park, pick up needles and make sure that it's safe for the kids to go outside. And if it's not, the kids stay inside. Parents who send their kids there say more needs to be done. This is a scary world for them to be growing up in, and this is the last thing I thought I'd have to worry about with them at daycare. We've seen an increase in fentanyl use and dealing activity in that neighborhood, so we've moved our resources there to address those problems. And this area always has been known for a, a pretty heavy drug area, so honestly, I believe they shouldn't have put a preschool right in there. So, so to be fair, the preschool has been there for over 40 years. The city's hands are somewhat tied here given open air drug use. It's not a crime under current Oregon law, and that's because of the voter approved measure 110, something that lawmakers and the mayor's office hope to change this session. Christine. OK, thank you so much, Devin. 200,000 legacy health patients who have Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance may soon have to pay out of pocket for medical care. Legacy Health says it plans to end its contract with Regents unless they agree to a new deal by the end of March. According to Legacy, Regents' reimbursement rate has not kept pace with rising costs. Regents says it's still working with Legacy on an agreement. Last month, Providence and Regents narrowly avoided a similar split. Before we get to Rod Hill, let's talk about the Lunar New Year celebration coming this weekend to Lansu Chinese Garden. Eric Patterson is behind the camera. I always love this shot. Every year around this time, we get that great early morning shot from the garden as it's lit up, usually just for our cameras. Uh, they've got that beautiful dragon there inside the waters of the Lansu Chinese Garden. And this, by the way, is going to be the year of the dragon. Officially kicking off on Saturday. We'll have more details and all the events you can check out at Lansu Chinese Garden in the Old Town area of Portland coming up here in a few minutes. Beautiful, beautiful lights there. Okay, Rod, yeah. no rain. I didn't see any rain there. So um, nice. Well, there's some rain in the area. Okay. Scattered, scattered, scattered shower though. activity. Uh, I'm going to take my piece of paper with me and I'm going to walk over to the radar. <laughs> if you know, need be. California's just been nuts. Now, here is here's Southern California right now with the most of what is scattered shower activity at this point, or at least broken areas of rain now dropping south of LA and they will be much drier. But yesterday they had up to an inch and a half of additional rainfall in Southern California. San Diego had some hail. At one point there was a tornado indicating there could be a, excuse me, radar indicating a potential rotation with the tornado. If you go back to Sunday, rain totals pushing six inches, foot of snow in the mountains. There was an elementary school the other day in Orange County that said uh, three to six inches of running water over the sidewalks. Uh, runoff that kids would be, you know, normally walking on to get to their school. So there are still flood warnings, watches, advisories for runoff today. Wow. <clears throat> Heavy rain up in Northern California. Right here is the right there. You can barely see on the infrared satellite picture. A weakening system that's dropping down to our south. Uh, so it is pushing, as we expected, increasing rain this morning along the coast. And it's throwing up some decent shower activity, although mostly light. 
uh, through the downtown Portland area at this hour. All of this, remember that disturbance is dropping to our south, is going to be quickly winding down by the time we get through 8, 9, 10 o'clock this morning, and then there won't be much rain after that. We're comfortable out the door again. Light winds, 40 or better. Kelso, Portland, Salem, Newport, Eugene. It's colder over in central Oregon this morning. Bend is below freezing. It's also 28 degrees out in Burns. Future cast, here we are at 6 this morning. Now watch as I hit my button. Yeah, we go into the mid-morning hours. Here's 10. So by 10, the rain that we have right now with that disturbance as well to our south. And we're pretty quiet the remainder of the day. We will see a scattered shower at times. Here's one. I think we'll also open up some more sun breaks today. That will get us back up to 50. Yesterday, we did hit my forecast high ex exactly at 52 in Portland. And I think today we'll be back up to 50. Tomorrow, same deal. It's just a, a there's an upper level trough overhead. There's really no weather systems of note coming and going. We just have this continued scattered shower threat. We'll see that tomorrow. Now that does change. Thursday overnight out in the Pacific, there's a big warm front. It's going to throw some deeper cloud cover and some rain our way, developing Thursday overnight into Friday morning. So if this is correct, you wake up Friday morning, it's pretty steady rain. Snow in the Cascades down to about 3,000 feet or so. And then in the afternoon, eventually that rain drops to our south, and we'll get some drying coming in later in the day into Friday night. And then after that, the weekend looks pretty quiet. Real quick, uh, here's Timberline this morning. They've had one to two inches of snow up there. Here's Government Camp. If you're traveling early, the passes are showing some snow cover, but during the day, daytime warming will get those roads back to clean pavement. 50 today, 50 tomorrow, not much going on overall. We have the rainy Friday morning, a shower chance Saturday. I still think Sunday favors uh, dry weather with a temperature of 53, and that is your forecast.